Thomas Dimitrov is a friend of the program and continuing, um, like the Masters in Georgia, a tradition unlike any other, which is calling into this show prior to a combine to get you, the listeners and viewers of this show, uh, up and running and inside uh, a draft room and what it looks like right now. How you been, Thomas? Rich, I am well. Thanks for having me once again. So what does your draft board look like right now? Walk me through it going into a combine. Well, you know, it's really interesting because we've had two sets of meetings. We had meetings in December, general our, our general stack meetings. And then in February, we have some very, very detailed uh, position stack meeting. So we, we go, you know, in, in depth with all of our position by position. And, and then we, uh, you know, obviously during that time, Rich, we're comparing to what may be out there in free agency, which is a big belief of mine. You definitely have to make sure you're making the right value moves, right? So I think bringing free agency into the discussion uh, is a very good time during, during this time before we do come to the combine. So our board is stacked, uh, I'd say probably halfway. We have a lot of work to do. But is there a number one overall on an Atlanta Falcons draft board in a room somewhere right now? Is there somebody, a name? There is, but I, I, I'm, like, uh, pretty paranoid uh, given where I've come from, and uh, that was a tongue-in-cheek line, of course. But <laughs> I'm, uh, no, I'm, I'm pretty particular. I, I have, we have a couple different boards in the, in the room, and we have a couple uh, computerized boards, so I, I keep them uh, mixed up a little bit so no one truly knows but for myself and Dan at this point. Okay, so just two people kind of know that sort of thing. Well, they uh, are, Arthur can know if he really wants, but he yeah. doesn't really bother me with that. Right? When, when does he get involved, at, if at all? You know, he, he'll, he'll sit in a set of draft meetings with us, uh, you know, as we start, you know, ripping through March and April. And uh, we definitely have a final draft meeting with him, of course. And we have good discussions with him. He'll be at the Combine. He always comes to the Combine every year for – one or two days. It's I, I like it. It's become a, an annual deal, and we we go out to St. Elmo's. Uh, I'm advertising, of course, and yes, uh, indeed. Dan and I will sit down with him. We'll talk talk football. He loves it, so it's good. Well, I mean, you I mean, you're already going to get a good table there, Thomas. I mean, you don't have to just drop names here to get a better table when Arthur Blank <laughs> strolls in with you and Dan Quinn. I mean, you know. All I need, all I need, more than anything, is your name when I get into the big city of. Los Angeles. Just help me out. <laughs> drop. You can drop my name anytime. Thomas Dimitrov, Atlanta Falcons general manager, joining me here. So does does Arthur Blank sit in the meetings with you uh, when you're going 15 minutes at a time with uh, prospects? You know, he does. Like I said, he's usually here for two days, and he'll he'll come in and sit in and, and sort of analyze. I mean, he's a guy, as you know, who's been very outspoken in his in his business ventures, you know, at Home Depot and having a really good feel for people. And, and so it's always interesting to hear his insight after, you know, one of these guys, you know, gets off the hot seat and walks out the door after waxing poetic and Arthur will have some really quick tidbits for us. Uh, it's, it's, it's really, it's really interesting to hear it from, from a guy like him who is, understands leadership and, and business building. So what does it, so I'm a prospect. I walk into the Atlanta Falcons interview room. What, what do I see and what do I encounter? You see, first of all, uh, Rich, you see a very relaxed room. We, we've, I've been in different rooms over the years of 20, this is 26 years, I think, at the Combine, where we've had a really stodgy, rigid room, which doesn't lend itself to some you know, really good, cool conversation. I'm a big believer in that, making it as casual as possible. Like what? Like uh, a lava you know, lamp? You got what? Are you incense? Yeah, I mean, uh, what do you mean by casual? Thomas, what do you got here? Don't don't start don't start bringing in uh, yeah lava lamps and other <laughs> other uh, <laughs> instruments that we're talking about. Here. No, we don't we don't do that. But what I will say is we get rid of the table situation. It's not like everyone's sitting around. We're okay. definitely more in a relaxed, casual uh, sofa and chairs. No love seats, by the way. <laughs> just chairs. Everything's all good. And we just we just have good conversation. And and the player comes in and. And, you know, we have, you know, myself, of course, Scott Pioli, and then Steve Sabor, our college director, and a few other people. Uh, we have the position coach and the D coordinator, and, of course, Dan Quinn and I are sitting, you know, right there, and we're anchored in on the questions that we want to ask. And uh, it's just usually a pretty good interactive conversation. And it's funny. I was talking to someone the other day, uh, actually another general manager, and we said, some guys come in and you wish you had 30 minutes. Other guys come in in two minutes. Rich, you are ready to kick them out the door. It's just the way it's like, oh, my gosh, it's time to go. <laughs> but um, Sounds like some dates I used to be on back in the day, to be very honest with you. <laughs> because I under understand. Because <laughs> it does – I've been through this process. It does feel like it is speed dating in a, in a way. Uh, and then, obviously, there's the, the on-field drills. Um, which one do you think, for any position, 
any 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 position, any on field drill, do you think shows you the most as a talent evaluator from the combine? Well, uh, short of the Rich Eisen run, which mm-hmm. you just played yourself right into that, I we did. can talk about that after. I, you know what? I think it's funny because I've looked at so many positions over the years, of course, and we've focused on them, and we've each each position grouping has a has a drill that I really hone in on, and you know, my biggest thing is making sure that we really. Uh, you know, we look at the, the athleticism, the movement, the stop-start ability. That's a big thing for me. And interestingly enough, during those receiver sessions, when we moved up uh, and historical, I think, 21 spots, if, if I'm not mistaken, um, which, by the way, thanks for always supporting me on oh, that. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. When, when I remember watching those drills and being really honed in on what it was like to see see the receivers, you know, put the foot in the ground and change direction and separate, those were big things. So. As you know, I'm really keyed in on the athleticism side of this game. We've talked about it before. So whether it's a defensive back planning and going, flipping his hips, whether it's an offensive lineman, you know, in the mirror drills, it all has to do with how people move, how they redirect, and, and what their body control is. Those are usually drills that really uh, catch my attention. And were any drills you'd say, I, don't, I just don't need it. Let's, let's get it out of there. If you could wave a wand. For the combine, tell us. I'm, you know what? I'm, I'm not a big fan of the timed backpedal drill uh, for the for the for secondary. The, for the DBs. I don't know why, but yeah, the DBs. I'm, well, I just the, the, I feel like the yeah. the gauntlet always confuses me because the gauntlet yeah. it's you're you're you want to see how a receiver catches, not like catches and drops the ball. That you that's the that's bad. We don't want to see that. We already have a problem Rich, with the we, catch rule. You're exactly when we get to a spot where we're all sitting around waiting to see someone take it in the beak and laugh so it's 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 kind of sad really because a lot of us are like come on now so it's an entertainment it's for entertainment purposes only is what you're saying the gauntlet there there is some of us yeah there are some elements of entertainment but i mean you can obviously some get see some guys snatch the ball in that drill but it has to do with the different people i mean look we have people throwing the ball along the line who i like there are some guys out there that are scouts and haven't thrown a ball or threw back 30 years ago and you know you it, you're all over the board with the type of people that are throwing so uh it, it makes for entertainment yes a couple more minutes here with you uh thomas dimitrov falcons general manager and just staying a little bit on on that julio jones trade that you referred to moving up 21 spots just give people an idea uh of of how it all works when you see somebody on film and then you see him at the combine and then you get an interview and then there's a pro day and all of that business and another interview when did you and the rest of the crew there that did include Les Snead, now the GM in, in Atlanta, I mean, in, in L.A. Uh, when did you guys say, that's it, we're, we're making this move. We're going to do it, and we want it because it's for Julio. Well, interesting, because it was a process, as you as just mentioned. I mean, through, you know, watching him as, a, of course, the year before he was an underclassman. I mean, I guess, you know, as, as we're watching him on video, we go to games, we see him again. We see him, uh, we see him at the combine running on a broken foot, right, basically, and doing what he did. Still popped off a low 4-3, I believe, and he was running routes, all the separation drills I was talking about earlier. I think when we left the combine and then we were going to interview him, which was probably about, you know, two, no, more like three plus weeks before uh, the draft. And I had gotten on the phone with uh, some teams at the top end of the draft, and one in particular with Tom Heckard at the Browns at the point. And uh, we were ready to go. We, we were convinced after our interview and spending time with him, taking the whole picture into account, that we thought this guy would be uh, a stud for us for, for years to come if we could ever pull it off. Now, at that time, we weren't sure if we had a – you know, uh, snowball's chance, of course. But uh, even when we first met him, when we first got into the hotel in Alabama to interview him, he basically looked away when he shook my hand because he thought, these guys have no chance. Why am I even wasting <laughs> ah, my time? <laughs> hey, Dion said he would walk out of interview rooms because he thought that they had no shot at him and just drag because he, he thought there's no way. But you never know who's going to trade up to come get you. You just never. I still tell Julio I want a piece of his his businesses, but he hasn't bought into that yet. So, last one for you: where where does the contract conversation with Matt Ryan stand right now between you and uh, and his son? Yeah, you know what we are uh, we are uh, we are talking, and and of course it's uh, it's not hot and heated at all. I mean, it's 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 in a it's in a uh, a little bit of a, a slow pace right now, and uh, you know we're we're not in any major rush. We feel confident that this A is not a very complicated situation, uh, albeit 
you know, significant as you can imagine. Um, but we feel like, you know, Matt wants to be at our place and we, we want him to be here for years to come. And we all have really good working relationships. We do not only with, with Matt, of course, but, you know, with Tom Con and we've done a number of deals with them. So, um, we're confident that, that this will be accomplished in the right way in the relatively near future. Well, I mean, isn't there some a bit of a clock, Thomas? So somebody who, let's say, has way fewer playoff wins than Matt Ryan sets a market at a newer level? And <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, being, I'm being serious. I mean, isn't there... And that's why I laugh. I, it's an uncomfortable laugh because, uh, yes, that's exactly right. I mean, I think, yes, there is an element of that, but I think the reality also is... Um, you know, if 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 uh, you know Matt and and his representation want to uh, you know wait and see what plays out over the next few weeks, um, obviously we can't force that, of course. So um, you know we're 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 standing by and they're standing by to uh, make decisions in, in the, again hopefully in the relatively near future. And do general managers send each other's texts? Like, did you send something to John Lynch saying, "What are you doing, brother? Come on now," something like that? Like, well, come on, what or Anything like that? I, I think that would world? be – I don't even know. That that seems like collusion, but I'm not even sure if it is. <laughs> but I will say, to your point, yes. there's probably a lot of um, – gosh, how do you even say that on, on – uh, I don't want to say the wrong word, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of uh, butt-busting on the whole thing or whatever I'm trying to say, right? Yes. There's, there, there's a, always a little bit of uh, kibitzing. God, that's an old-fashioned word, isn't it? It's a great word. Means. It's a great word. Tom, if, look, uh, I'll, as the Jew uh, here in Los Angeles, it's a good use of the kibitzing. Good job. <laughs> that's good. But I, I will say, there's always a little bit of joking around about it because, look, you know, uh, you know, there, there's a guy who um, is you know, a very adept quarterback out in San Francisco who is how many games has he played? Six games. Yep, he hasn't lost any of them. Seven. He's played yeah. seven. Yeah. Let's not seven. short him one. And, but. He's done a heck of a job, and uh, and I think his numbers were significant. So, uh, you know, that's that's uh, that, that's an interesting uh, and and can complicate things, of course. <laughs> <laughs> now that's me laughing. Hey, Thomas, I'll see you out there in Indy. Thanks for doing this as always. Uh, and when uh, when uh, you're in St. Elmo's, drop the word kibitzing with Arthur. I think you'll like it. Perfect. You always make me laugh. I appreciate it. Take care, buddy. Thank you. You got it. That's uh, Thomas Dimitrov. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.